What is up, everybody? We are going to do some ethical hacking. Oh, sorry about that. Happy, happy Wednesday. It is the 10th of February. We just had Patch Tuesday. So I thought it'd be an appropriate day to talk about a topic that's important uh, to my, my and yours. It should be important. Virtualization. Well, what does virtualization mean? Well, we're going to talk about it. So let's get into it. So virtualization, for those that don't know, and that's perfectly fine, it's not a common thing. Um, if you're in, not, not in the IT world, maybe you don't have uh, a lot of exposure to virtualization. That's fine. So virtualization is really just taking your existing hardware, taking your existing computer, and hooking up more stuff to it. Essentially making uh, virtual machines that act like if they were files. And so virtual machines are a great way to save on costs. They're a great way to save on uh, energy. They're part of you know all kinds of you know green initiatives. They they just cut down on the amount of resources you need to have to manage your uh, server. So you can do virtualization of the server. You can do virtualization of the operating system. You can even have virtualized containers. It's pretty amazing. So so where do we need to start out with virtualization? Well, virtualization is important in the sense that you got to first get some software. You got to get you got to make sure one that your BIOS is compatible. So if you have an older computer, you might have to check this. But for the most part, newer computers bought in the last five years or so probably will support this. That's fine. So let's go over to uh, VirtualBox. Let's open up Chrome, only because Chrome is the best browser. No, it's just the most most popular browser. So let's go to um, VirtualBox.org. This is one example of a hypervisor. So VirtualBox, you can see here, um, this is a x86 AMD or Intel virtualization product. What does that mean? It works on Windows, Linux, Mac, pretty much anything. So notice that you'll see there, you have to have this AMD V or VTX. So a processor that supports that. So for the most part on Windows, that's not gonna be a problem. Now, older Windows operating systems, that was a problem. But um, and then you can see different Linux ones. So there are virtualization that runs on Linux, Windows. We're strictly gonna be focusing on Windows this time because probably if you're running Linux, you're probably not gonna need to run virtual machines necessarily of Linux if you already have it, but you might. So so how do we start out? Well, first thing we do is we head over to VirtualBox and we click download. I'm gonna move myself over here because this is, I am in the way of myself. So there you go. So click on downloads. And so once you click on downloads, then you're gonna go and you're gonna look for your, your platform. So this is VirtualBox. This is the binary, this is the source code. So what does that mean? Well, it's an installer, right? You can run older builds, but generally you're probably gonna just click on this one right here. You're gonna click on VirtualBox 6.1.18. So click on the Windows host and it's gonna download it. And once you download it, then you're gonna click install. So I already have it downloaded, but um, we'll go ahead and open up the downloads folders to show you. Boom. So in the downloads folder, VirtualBox. So we can see it's about 105 megabytes. So we're gonna install that. And we'll say, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and Click on it. I'm not sure why my screen is scaling this way, but that's that's weird. And I have this mouse that's messing up. So if, I, if you see me missing clicks, you'll know that's why. So once you install, uh, when you install VirtualBox, you'll get a prompt that'll run you through kind of a wizard of how to install it. If you already have existing VirtualBox installed, um, it'll say, hey, you want to repair this or do you want to go ahead and click continue? So I'll say next. And if I was doing a new install, I just click through and follow the prompts and that'll be fine. So I'm not gonna do this right now because I don't have any issues, but basically once you're finished with a VirtualBox install, then you're gonna launch VirtualBox from your start menu, VirtualBox. Of course, I recommend pinning it to the start menu. You can right click on it, pin it there, and you're gonna see something like this. Now. I have several virtual machines. You're going to have nothing initially because 
you're not going to have any VMs. So what are you going to do? You're going to say file, and you're going to say new virtual machine. Now this is if you want to build straight from an ISO. Um, I'm also going to show you how to get a virtual appliance, a virtual appliance like Kali, Kali Linux, the penetration distro uh, for hackers. Now it is it is important that you understand kind of some decisions that you're going to have to make, and that's perfectly okay. You got to understand a little bit first about your, kind of what you're doing here, because you're going to have to figure out one what you need to install, and two, you know, is there is there anything missing? So my mouse started acting up today, and so I'm just going to use the touchpad because I'm getting irritated with the mouse not clicking properly. So virtualization. So we're going to do uh, first, you're going to give it a name. So we're going to call it Linux, whatever you want to call it, right? You can call it Linux, you can call it anything you want. If you're doing Mac or you're doing something else, then it'll be different. If you're doing Windows, it'll be Windows. But give it a name and then pick what version you want. So it really doesn't matter too much. If you know you're doing Ubuntu, um, that's fine. Otherwise, you can just do it, leave it as the default. You want to pick out what memory. So memory size is important. So figuring out what memory, um, let me go ahead and get my Epic pen up here. That'll allow me to kind of highlight stuff as, as we go. Um, so you can pick uh, up to the maximum memory. So I have 16 gigabytes, which is fine. Um, so 16 gigs right here is what I, what I have maximum. This is what I, I currently set it to, so one gig. So probably I'm going to want to set it to something more than that. So two gigs is generally recommended. So we'll put in 2048 and you're going to ask, do you want to create a virtual hard disk? So you'll say yes. And basically you can pick the one you want. Just leave it as default. That's fine. And you click create and it's going to do the thing. And so now you got this Linux virtual machine with nothing attached to it. So now what are you going to do? You got to go in and you got to assign it uh, some storage. So you got this, if you right click on it, you go into settings, you're going to have this, these options. So I always want uh, uh, drag and drop and, and clipboard so I can copy paste between my virtual machine, but you might not want that. There's also other things here like encryption. Maybe you want that, maybe you don't. So, so once you set up your general settings, then you go into your system, which is arguably the most important processor so how many cpus so i actually have four cores on mine so if i wanted to give it eight it's not going to let me because notice it came invalid settings down here because i don't have an eight core system i have a four core system now you might have a beast of a machine and have an eight core system that's perfectly fine so um give it you know even two cores is better than one so i would say give it two cores and then give it uh Acceleration, if you need that, great. If not, you can leave all the stuff to fault. That's fine. And I'm just going to say it. Uh, display, this is really not important unless you care about the graphics controller. Um, this is where you're going to want to go, storage. Storage is important because storage is going to um, allow you to put your image that you download of whatever, whatever OS you want to run in a virtual machine. So we're using the hypervisor. In this case, it's a Type 2 hypervisor. We're going to use a file, basically an ISO file or some other kind of file that you might have saved. Um, you can download all kinds of free um, Linux uh, downloads on Ubuntu. You can download it on uh, SUSE, Red Hat, all kinds of stuff. So um, I have some 
one of these drives I have some Linux distros. Um, we can do so I can't seem to find it we'll go ahead and go up here and we'll go to Ubuntu just because Ubuntu is a good place and and we'll also go to Kali so two different things so they're kind of based on the same Linux flavor um, they're both what's known as Debian based Linux so, um, so the commands are similar um, so if you go to Kali and you want to download a, a ISO you can go to the Kali.org slash downloads page and you click on um, the download for your Particular image so um, it's about four gigabytes depending on which one you get if you want the live disk or you want the full disk but I want to get the full disk and so it's going to download the ISO and then it's going to take some time and we're going to come back I'll go ahead and save that and then from there then I can actually put that into my virtual machine now what about Ubuntu Ubuntu's got several different versions, just like uh, Kali. Um, you got to accept their uh, terms. So Canonical is the one who makes Ubuntu. So you can get enterprise versions. You can get uh, containers. You can get Internet of Things. Can't say enough great things about Ubuntu. It's awesome. Linux is great. You should try it. So I'm going to download the newest version because I want to see what the new version is. And it's going to ask you, do you want to donate? Obviously, by all means, if you can, definitely throw them a few bucks. But I'm going to put my... Uh, latest and greatest ISO in here and then from there I'm actually gonna make a new folder because I don't think I have a folder called Ubuntu so I'm gonna save it as that and then we're gonna wait for that to download so you can see the ones Kali's already going uh, we got about 12 minutes left so we'll pause the video and then we'll come back Are you damn serious? The whole so um, we've got now the virtual machine installing, and we're going to go ahead and wait for that. Basically, we've set up the Ubuntu image we downloaded, and we're going to close out these little prompt windows. Basically, VirtualBox is letting us know that it's capturing the mouse, and that's uh, absolutely fine. So we're going to wait for it to install. Um, So it takes a little bit of time, so we'll pause and then we'll come back. So you'll notice here when uh, you get to the install screen, you have a couple options. You can actually boot uh, Ubuntu to uh, a live disk without making any changes. So if you decide you want to try out this Linux thing and maybe not uh, necessarily mess up your computer, you can do that. So. You can say, okay, I want to try Ubuntu, but I don't want to necessarily install it. But in my case, we're going to go ahead and install it. So you can pick uh, what language you need for English. Um, like Tom Green said, I see most of you speak English already, so we can skip that one. Um, I don't know why I picked Spanish, because my touchpad is alter sensitive. I want to go back. Oh, joy. Oh, joy. Um, no, go back. <laughs> Not sure how that happened. Oh, there's a card in the way. So, out of the way. My desk is really a cluttered mess, y'all. We gotta scroll all the way back up. There's a lot of Englishes. So, no, there's like English, Australian English, Ghana, Nigeria, South. We're going U.S. English. Though I kind of, it'd be kind of funny to do British English. But, uh. Yeah, so we're going to go, oh, Cherokee English. Um, but yeah, we're going to just go, go with regular English, and you can actually type out um, on the keyboard what it's going to look like. Hello, this is not Spanish. I, yo, hablo espanol. So test out your keyboard because you want to make sure that you got the right uh, thing, especially if you do like I do and you screw up the thing and like the wrong thing by accident um, and somehow we still got the wrong language and this is going to be an outstanding uh, <clears throat> thank you I would like English install now let's go with the English not the Spanish 
So it actually backed up because. Uh, All right, we're going to go with English. All right, now, so notice it's kind of scaling off the screen. So the OK is actually over here. You might have that problem in a virtual machine. It's just the just resolution of these um, virtual machines sometimes, depending on your monitor size. So I need at least 8.6 gigs to install Ubuntu. So uh, do I need to make the drive bigger? And why is it just this size, y'all? I thought I made it bigger than eight gigs. So this is a, this is an interesting problem you can you might run into. So again, what I have to do now is, is go back and resize uh, the drive. That's fine. We're going to go ahead and um, we'll just assume it all went to plan for this one. Uh, we have to what we have to do is we have to power the drive off power the virtual machine off and basically uh, start over because the, this is something very common the disks will um, it will not work properly so I'm gonna say yes I'm not sure why the why it's being all laggy but but I'm just gonna go ahead and power off log out I could try Ubuntu and then do it that way but I'm just gonna um, abort it this way If you go to try Ubuntu, uh, it'll it'll still prompt you to uh, install it later. Now, this is what's so cool about Linux is that I mean you can you know really do a lot with um, on the same machine. So I have one machine, and thanks to the magic of virtual machines, I can do just a ton of stuff with it. I can have four or five operating systems that they look as far as you know all things considered, they look like um, a computer on the network. So notice you got this shortcut here for install Ubuntu, but I can browse the web. It's already connected to the network because it's using my wireless adapter because I bridged it uh, that way. So I kind of like the new uh, the new lookout, the new layout. Um, but if at any point you want to install it, you can go ahead and just uh, click on the install button. But first thing I'm going to do is change this resolution because this is really um, change the display settings. Of course, you can do this in the command line, but it's probably going to be a little bit more painful. Um, so I want something better than 800 by 600. Let's go uh, 1920 by um, 1200. No, we'll go we'll go 1280 by 1024. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that looks better. That was that was kind of all right. So we're gonna keep those changes. Um, and we're, so we've got all the same stuff in Linux you do as regular Linux. I mean, it's, it's for all intents and purposes, it's a virtual machine that can run uh, all the new for all the new flavors. So, so to me, I mean, it even has uh, Bluetooth, so I could use an external Bluetooth dongle. It's got an email client. So it's the magic of virtual machines. Now let's go over here and let's go look at what if I want to get Kali. So notice I have two Ubuntu. I have the new one. And I'm actually going to uh, eventually rename this, but for right now, um, I can't rename it while it's running, I don't believe. Yeah, you have to wait till it stops. But what if I want to get a virtual appliance? What is a virtual appliance? It's like an all-in-one self-contained package that has everything you need just to get started. If you don't want to do all the stuff I'm doing, you don't want to mess with installing Linux, you don't really want to like learn that bit, you just want to get going. So what are you going to do? You're going to go to Kali.org download page, and you're going to look at, you're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom of this chart here. Notice that you have this section right here. It says uh, Kali Linux VMware or VirtualBox. So what does that mean, and what are you going to do? You are going to click on that, and effectively, you're going to pick the version you want. So now if you're using VMware, which we may do a video later on, you'll pick VMware, but I'm going to use VirtualBox because I want... 64-bit virtual box and notice that it's on the offensive security download page so I have to go somewhere else to get it and that's fine so I'm going to click on that and so when I go over here I'm going to have to scroll down and I got to click on the plus sign because I got to expand it what is this this is an OVA file um, VMware does their stuff in a 7-zip file format, compression. So 
If I want the OVA, which is going to work with VirtualBox, I click on download, and this is 20.20.4. 20 this uses the Open Virtualization Format Archive. Again, don't worry about that too much, but that's going to be the all-in-one. You can literally just download it, and you're good to go. So I'm going to open up my uh, Kali folder here, and I'm going to go ahead and save it. Save. And that's going to take a little while to download. It's a 3.5 gigabyte file, although I have pretty decent internet. It's going to take a little bit. And notice here, um, these images have the default password of Kali, Kali, and may have pre-generated SSH keys. That's going to be something we'll talk about later. But um, these images are, they took away the old root account, which used to be, uh, it was root access. So what is root? Root is admin rights. So if you have admin rights on a box, so they'd rather have you log in with a user account and then do what's called sudo or sudo to root. So, um, I mean, you could even get versions of Kali uh, for uh, smartphones. So if you have a Nexus tablet or a Nexus 7 or one of these uh, OnePlus phones sitting around, you can um, uh, put Kali Linux on the smartphone and make it a hacking box. We may do a video on that at some point, but right now we are going back to our... Uh, virtual machine and we are going to go ahead and shut our Ubuntu down and we are going to uh, open up a terminal and so notice you kind of have a taskbar kind of like you do on, on Windows so you can type in uh, here, you can type in uh, terminal, and we're going to type in, uh, I love the, the background, sudo power off. And so it's going to shut the thing down. So, so remove the installation medium and press enter. If you were doing this on a real machine, you would take out your thumb drive or your DVD or whatever. Uh, I'll say one more thing. If you're... Wondering where my mouse cursor is right now. I can't scroll my mouse on the VM. It's because uh, VirtualBox captures the mouse. If you want to find your mouse, you just hit the right control button, and it will actually uh, bring your mouse back out for you. So right control is the what is called the host key. Basically, that means that it'll capture the mouse only if um, integration is not currently available. Basically, it captures your mouse and then is unusable to other applications. So that could be kind of a hassle, but for right now, we're going to go ahead and let that shut down. And then once it, once we get confirmation shut down, you don't want to do this like fast. You don't ever want to like slam your virtual machines. Um, so let's go check on our download progress on Kali while we're waiting for this. It says we have eight minutes to go. So that's not bad. So notice when we get it downloaded, all we're literally going to do is we're going to double click on it and we're going to open it. Unlike the ISO where we actually had to build it out. So I'm limited by my virtual machines, like how much memory I have. So some other topics we can cover while we're waiting for this to download. Um, so how do we allocate resources? And we've talked about hypervisor. What is a type one hypervisor? Well, a type one is really something that's designed more for enterprise. It's designed to be what's called a bare metal hypervisor. So a type one hypervisor or bare metal hypervisor is a, is a much faster performing hypervisor. It does not have a guest operating system. So right now my guest operating system is Windows 10. So I'm running, if you can hit the start menu and you can look at this PC. I'm currently running Windows 10. It's an Alienware i7. So you can see my specs. i7, 16 gigs of RAM. Um, there's my information, Windows 10 Pro Insider Preview, which I don't recommend the Insider Preview unless you really don't care about instability. Um, I've had some problems with just bugs and the system not running super well, but it is on the more latest and greatest. Now, so a type one hypervisor is more run for servers. It's designed if you're gonna have large workloads. Um, VMware's 
ESXi is a common type one hypervisor. So while we're waiting on this to install, how do we back up a virtual machine? That's a question, that's a good question. So if I want to back up a virtual machine, let's say I've got this Remnux here, this one virtual machine, I'm gonna right click on it and I can actually um, export it to Oracle Cloud or I can clone it. Cloning it basically um, makes it another another copy of the, of the virtual machine. But I would rather, I'm just gonna take a snapshot. So I click on this take button up here at the top and I click on snapshot and then I give it a name. This is my first snapshot on Remnox. And let me put the day's date. So that's probably a good idea. And then it's gonna go and it's gonna make a snapshot. Now keep in mind, when you do snapshots on virtual machines, you're actually using space on your hard drive. It's not free. It's not going to allow you to just, um, you know, use the thing and not um, take up space. So now we've got our snapshot and we can actually see it. We can see where it is, it's in the D drive. And we can see how much size it is. It has some characteristics like how much memory. So if we open it in Explorer, we can now see we've got a, the main disk, which is 18 gigabytes right here. How much is are the snapshots? So the snapshots are a little bit smaller. This is the very first one. And so, current state, we, and then we, from there, we can use that snapshot to do other things like cloning a virtual machine, um, things of that sort. So, now VirtualBox isn't the only place to run virtual machines, but it's kind of the, the easiest and it's free. So once you install VirtualBox, you're going to want to do one more thing. You're going to want to go and get the VirtualBox um, extension pack. Why do you want to do that? Because it's going to have some extra features that you want, like the guest edition. So um, you want to make sure the same version of your VirtualBox is installed as the same version of the uh, extension pack. So you want to make sure you click the right one. If you don't have the right one, you'll get some errors and things may not work exactly right. So click on the supported platforms and it's going to download it for you. Then once you click on it, you're just going to run it, um, it'll run it as administrator and it probably will ask you, are you sure you want to install this? In my case, it's already installed. Do you want to reinstall it? So I'm going to say no, but just know this is the version number is 6118R 4212. So that's, that's how you keep the version number straight. So. Now we got that out of the way. Let's go back over to our Ubuntu virtual machine, which is now powered off, hopefully. Are you still sticking around? Um, enter. Oh, I forgot to press enter. That's the problem. So um, let's go ahead and change this drive. We're gonna go into storage. I'm gonna change, uh, we're gonna actually, with this one, um, This one is supposed to be dynamically allocated, but um, I'm going to go ahead and just add one. We're going to add a new hard drive and we're going to create one. And we're going to make it, uh, let's say, um, 16.0 gigabyte, not 1600. Oh, I guess I can't put a decimal in there. 16 gigabytes, and we'll make it dynamically allocated uh, VDI. So there's other kinds of uh, architecture, but we're gonna do it on, I don't want it to be on here. I want it to be on the D drive because I don't want to take up space on my regular SSD. I'm going to go on my D drive here, VirtualBox VMs, and I'm going to create it here. We'll call it uh, Ubuntu 20.10, and we will make a new folder so it doesn't get confused. If I can stress anything, make new folders. Make sure you use 
kind of common practices, just common sense to keep stuff um, separate. So now we've created that, and we're going to say, okay, we've created it now, um, and it is 16 gigabytes, and we're going to say choose. Now we should be able to go back into that virtual machine and click start. And, well, it's thinking, it's thinking. And so you can tell this not to show, um, it'll switch to scale mode, but that's just the way it shows it on the screen. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just gonna start it. And you could actually pick the boot device just like you would a regular computer. And so it's, So no bootable medium found, uh, system halted. That's, that does happen. And we're gonna go into settings. And I thought we did set that. Um, oh, so we got rid of the, uh, the live image. That was a problem. There we go. Now we're gonna go ahead and control a delete. Uh, I think it's control insert on VirtualBox, but we can go ahead and uh, close this out, power it off, and then we're going to start it up again. So I forgot that when you create the new disk, sometimes if you don't have your, um, when you create the new disk, it doesn't have your image mounted. So by the image, all that's going to do is basically let you um, have something to start with. So now we shouldn't get that error, and there we go. We got Ubuntu start but it's good to see these little problems because sometimes things happen and of course this you have the auto keyboard capture on thank you for letting me know again so i can actually um basically this will make it uh, unavailable to other applications and i can turn this off if i don't want to see this i can just click these off and say no i don't i don't want to see none of it so we're gonna let this run through its check while this is going, we're going to go back over and see if our um, download is done. And now our Kali Linux box is done downloading. Look at that. So notice it downloads this OVA file. So all we have to do, literally, um, you can right click on it and go properties. You can see how big it is. It's a self-contained image of Kali Linux, the pen testing distribution. Um, why did Windows Store pop up? I don't know. But that's that's it. Make sure that everything's good. One thing you could do is you could go and check the hash value and make sure that everything matches. Um, we could go back over to Kali.org and see, hey, does this hash uh, match? So really, all that would do for us is make sure we know we got a good download. We didn't get a, uh, a corrupted file or a file that somebody tampered with. So we could take this SHA-256-SUM over here have to go to the right one so I copy this and then make sure I got the right um, image so I could actually take this and go to a website like crackstation.net and I could upload a file and do it that way but basically they just give this to you so you can make sure that nothing has changed since the time you downloaded it so that's fine I'm gonna double click on this and it's going to open up VirtualBox and it's going to say, what do you want to do? Do you want to import this? And I'm going to say, I want it in the, it's got all the information. It's already there. It's built from offensive security. It's got two CPUs, two gigs of RAM. I'm going to change the, the location because I don't want it to be on the C drive. I want it to be on the D drive. I'll put it in uh, D drive. And we'll put it in VirtualBox VMs. And we'll make, we'll put it right here. Import. So it says it requires you agree to terms and conditions of the software. And I will say, I agree. So that's going to go and it's going to take some time to import. So we're going to do that and we'll come back. All right. So we're back on the install. Notice that, uh, so it's got a disk. Um, we're going to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. We're continuing on. We're walking through the process of setting up this virtual machine. So this is exactly what you would do if you were doing a regular machine. 
um, which that's fine. Um, you can set your time zone. I'm in Chicago time zone. Hit continue. And from there, we're going to say, uh, give it a name. So we're going to call it Ubuntu. You don't have to call it you know, that. You can call it whatever. So pick a username. Obviously, if you're going to expose this to the internet, you want to have good passwords. Um, you can have it log in automatically or not. Um, and if you have a, a corporate domain, you could actually hook this up to your corporate domain. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say boom. And username is reserved for the system. So that's that's a good point. Um, so I can't do that as a user. So I'm just going to do my first name dot my last name. And it can only contain no period, so I forgot about that. Some Linux distros are different. They'll let you put other things in, but if you're using Active Directory or whatever. And it's telling me I have a short password. That's fine. I don't have time for this. I'll do a whatever. Because I'm just, just making a virtual machine, people. I'm not trying to make everything perfect. So I can make it uh, better with a password manager, obviously, but... Um, now it's going to copy files, and then we'll have our virtual machine installed. So let's go check in on our Kali uh, box and see how we're see how we're doing here. So it looks as though it might be done. So this is 2020 version four. All we did was uh, double click on it, and it imported it for us. So it looks like we're pretty much ready to go. So why do I have three copies of VirtualBox open? Go ahead and close a couple of these because. Literally too many uh, virtual boxes open. Not sure why. But now I've got this extension pack, which I'm going to delete because I don't need that anymore. But you can take this OVA with you anywhere, and you can essentially, any system you need to, um, you know, create a VM on, it's a way to do it. So, boom, we double click on it, and we've now got ourselves a virtual machine. So, so this is, uh, we've, we've talked about a lot of things. We've covered uh, VirtualBox, we've covered uh, what is virtualization, we've talked about hypervisors, we've downloaded Kali Linux, we've talked about what is a virtual machine, we've talked about how to allocate resources to it, we've talked about type one versus type two hypervisor, and we talked about uh, how to back up a VM doing snapshots. The only thing we haven't done um, is VMs and the cloud. So removing a VM is pretty straightforward. You can just right click on it and get rid of it if you don't want it to be there anymore. Um, but in our case, we're going to leave it there. Now notice I have two, um, having two virtual machines running is going to definitely impact my memory and my, so it is starting. It takes a little bit of time to start, but that's perfectly fine. So, so once it starts, um, then we'll be able to access it just like we will um, any other virtual machine. So we can have these things side by side so we can have one virtual machine over here. And we can have the other one um, over here. So we can literally have multiple virtual machines on a single desktop. How cool is that? To me, that is what that is the best thing about virtualization. Um, it is a great way to build your own hacking lab, which we'll probably do a separate video on how to do that. Of course, it requires a bit of a beefier system to do it right, um, but that's okay. This is the the splash screen for Kali. You hit the uh, enter, or is it the alt key? I think it's the alt key. We'll show you kind of what things are uh, booting up. Alt enter. We'll show you what it's trying to do. Um, but we can change the settings. We can uh, look at different modes. We can adjust window size. Um, we can change our virtual screen size. We can look at all our different devices because we've got all of our USB devices here. We've got our webcam, we've got audio, optical drives, everything. So pretty cool. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments what you think. I'll put timestamps for all this stuff once I get the editing done. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I, we just hit 100 subscribers. Um, it really means the world to me that you guys are interested in what I'm doing. Um, so definitely subscribe, comment, drop a like. Let me know what you want to do better, what you want to see me do better. What can I do better? Because if I'm not always trying to improve, then what am I doing? So thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one.
Take care. Be safe.